You are watching KUTV Primetime News with Mutegi K. Martin. Welcome back. You're still watching KUTV Primetime News. We here to inform you on matters that are pertinent to everything that you need to know about the country. And today we're speaking about reproductive health policy. And now, during the public participation for East Africa Community Sexual Reproductive Health Bill that happened on 29th June, Youth Changes Kenya submitted a memorandum aimed at amplifying the voices of 55 young people from 13 counties in Kenya. In the past two months, Youth, Kenya, Youth Changes Kenya has participated in the review process of the National Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health Policy. And of concern is that a few young people are engaged in the process and the consultations were held in very few countries, leaving a huge section of the population underrepresented. They are now calling on the Ministry of Health to include the input of the youth. Youth Changes Kenya YCK is a community-driven organization that was founded in 2015 to promote sexual reproductive health and rights and address systemic issues of sexual violence among adolescent girls and young women from rural and peri-urban areas. And now I'm joined by Josephine Cheng, who is program lead at YCK. Karibu sana. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Tell us a bit about yourself now that you're here <laughs> live. Fine. Last time we talked via Zoom. I know yeah. the COVID-19 thing was a bit scary. Uh, so yeah, my, yeah. Name is, my name is Josephine. Mm -hmm. I work around sexual productive health of young people. And mm -hmm. I'm also very passionate about just gender equality and ensuring that everyone has a voice and has agency to act when it comes to their rights. All That's right. what I'm passionate about the most. And for fun, mm -hmm. what I do for fun is jump on trampolines, which a lot of you <laughs> make fun of me for, but it works for me. All right. All right. Welcome to our studios Thank today. Thank you. And we're here, to, we're here to talk about the reproductive health policy. And um, I know your organization has a lot to say, and we need to hear what exactly you have been championing for. And uh, last Friday, the Ministry of Health called upon stakeholders to, vali to validate this particular policy. And we saw disengagement from the civil society. <laughs> and you people, uh, you need to tell us why that happened. Um, the reason why that happened, there's, a, there's been a lot of fracas with that particular policy because the Ministry of Health had planned to launch it last year. Mm -hmm. But the Council of Governors stopped it because not all stakeholders were engaged. Mm -hmm. So after it was stopped, there was a consultation with the Council of Governors. And then they had planned to launch it now after that again. But then mm -hmm. when you looked at the document again, it still had gaps. Mm -hmm. So we stopped the launch for the second time mm -hmm. last year. Right. And then this year now at around March. So when mm -hmm. it got to April, at around April, guys went back to Mombasa to review the document now with the Ministry of Health. But then when they came back uh, at around June with the document, now when we were told this was being launched, we were called for a validation meeting. How do you call people for a validation meeting to validate a document you've refused to share prior to the meeting? Mm -hmm. What are we going to validate if we've not seen the document, the final document? We kept insisting for them to share it. They said we'd share it, we'd share it, we'd share it. We waited, they didn't share it. Mm -hmm. So on the day of the launch, a document is being launched that we've not seen. We are not even sure what is, what is in it. So as he said, we just decided to disengage from the process because it did not, the process, when it came to the development of policy, was not meaningful because how do we just have few representation of people and say everyone was involved? The fact that, for example, Josephine was involved, does that does not mean that everyone was involved because Josephine and my young woman, my needs are different. There's a young woman who's living with disability. She needs to be in that space to speak for herself, not us speaking for them all the time. Mm -hmm. so that's why we disengage from that whole process. Plus, the policy has gaps in mm -hmm. terms of the things that it is there. It's promoting, it's pushing for abstinence, which is good. We are not saying abstinence is bad, mm -hmm. but it's not working for everyone. Mm -hmm. Can we have policies that are driven by data, by science, by the lived realities of young people on the ground? And let's not, the Ministry of Health should not use their own biases to develop policies, because this policy is supposed to be in existence for 10 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years. So mm. we'll have 10 years of if you're a single person and you are you having issues with your fertility and you want to get assistance, unfortunately you cannot because the policy only covers for couples okay. and if you're single, um, you'll have to be vetted by a committee that will be set up by the CS. So we are looking at just why are they deny, denying people so many rights when it comes to sex, sexual reproductive health. So that's why we just 
disengage from the whole process. All right. Yeah. And you mentioned bias on the part of the Ministry of Health. Yes. Um, apart from what you just mentioned when it comes to, you know, segregating the single uh, ladies and their and, and their um, and what we'd call their their their, their policies yeah. and their interests being shelved. Uh, what are what are other biases that we, we would find in that particular situation? Um, so the policy also speaks about for the intersex people, mm -hmm. um, even with the advice from professionals that it's it's not good for them to delay corrective surgery. The policy says they'll get corrective surgery after puberty. When that happens, it's a bit riskier. Mm -hmm. So that's what the policy says. So if you're an intersex, you'll have to wait until you're like. 1920 for you to get the corrective surgery which is very limiting because mm. if 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 i were to get the surgery when i'm a bit younger the, the risk are very minimal that's another thing the other thing is you cannot get a service until you're 21 years old so i'm trying to imagine what happens to that we are not living in a perfect world uh, clearly mm -hmm. but what happens we're having children who are leading families what happens to that uh, 15 year old who's leading a family who's married and wants to get a contraceptive and you're telling her to go get a parent where is she going to get a parent from mm -hmm. so we need to also realize the evolving capacities of young people because we are not homogeneous we are diverse mm -hmm. and we have different needs and we are all kenyans and everyone needs to be captured in that policy document but unfortunately it's not all right you talked about meaningful engagement of the young people when it comes to policy development processes in the in the country um, which uh, pr probably you're gonna tell me whether it's just <laughs> in the health sector or or elsewhere according to uh, I know you're, you're majorly focused yeah. on productive health but um, what 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 is this that you're calling meaningful engagement is it just under representation or is it or is it more than that it's it's more than under representation because if you are for example you're calling me for a meeting mm -hmm. uh, today is on a Friday and your the meeting is tomorrow and you are telling me about the meeting at this time how am i supposed to engage meaningfully during that whole process how am i supposed to do that if i'm not given enough time to prepare and to just familiarize myself with with what the discussion will be around so you need to give people the time to go to to go through what the meeting will be about mm -hmm. you need to give them the choice to decide whether to participate or not and they need to be assigned responsibilities you cannot call me for a meeting in the evening you're telling the meeting is tomorrow and you expect me to show up as a young person i'm supposed to look for fair to show up for that meeting i will not engage i'll just come sign your two papers i was there but go but i will not have given you anything honestly speaking and it's mm -hmm. not only in the health sector mm -hmm. it's happening across different sectors because even with the election you can see a lot of young people there's a lot of water apathy mm -hmm. because people don't understand and they're not engaged um, as much so that's why there's just a lot of mismatch when it comes to engagement of young people in our country all right um and for 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 young people to be included in these particular programs and and processes uh, what exactly do these particular bodies and authorities need to do to make sure that exactly these people are brought on board and they get to do what they do they need to do especially in public participation to contribute to these particular policies i think the first thing is that people need to realize is public participation is a constitutional right we have the right to engage at that level mm -hmm. in as much as most of the time when you're talking about public participation the meetings are posted on Mag what are they called? Out magazine most of the time. And people don't read, young people don't read those. Mm -hmm. How about they go with the times if there's a public participation process? How about they post it on their different social medias? So that young people know, by the way, tomorrow there's this public participation process, they're discussing this, this is what your role is. You see, that way, young people will be able to engage. But if you tell me, but then there's a public participation forum tomorrow, am I going to attend your meeting tomorrow or go hustle? Mm. No, you see, also giving people time to prepare for such things is very important. And also for the different organizations and the different um, bodies, it's important for you to know what meaningful engagement you look like. The fact that you have Josephine and three others there is not meaningful engagement. But if you have Josephine, if you have a woman with living with HIV, if you have a young person, if you collect young people in all their diversity mm -hmm. and give them time to actually share their issues that is what you call meaningful engagement all right uh, now let's talk about something that you people are very passionate and advocating for you mentioned a few minutes ago that um uh, uh you know the segregation of of the young mothers when it comes to their health uh services and the reproductive health services and the provision of the same and um uh, i have i have quite uh, alarming statistics here where about 700 teenage girls are getting pregnant daily 
and this is a, a, a research that has been done over a two-month period mm -hmm. in this particular year according to the ministry of health 700 yeah. teenage girls getting pregnant yet um according to what you said uh, the ministry of health um has a bit of bias when it mm -hmm. comes to providing services mm -hmm. for the same same people and the numbers are increasing daily yeah. What is being done on the ground? I know you, you guys are advocating, <laughs> but what, what is the work that is being done on the ground to make sure this nightmare comes yeah. to an end? And just to me, there's another alarming statistic. We were yeah. ranked third in the world when it comes to teenage pregnancy oh my. a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. which is very disheartening because when we are looking at the data, the data, what the ministry wants to do and what the data is saying is totally different. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can only speak to what Youth Changes Kenya is doing and what I've seen other organizations doing. As for government, unfortunately, I cannot speak for them. Um, because when you go to meetings with them, they're telling us, work is being done, we are doing this, we are doing that. But when you come to the ground, nothing is really being done. So for YSK, what we're doing is we're having interventions that promote access to sexual reproductive health services for young people. We are currently reintegrating teenage girls, teenage mm -hmm. moms back to school in Kakamega and just offering the aspect of psychosocial support for them. So that is what we're doing as Youth Changes Kenya. As for government, I cannot speak for them, unfortunately. Okay. We, we know who are supposed to speak <laughs> for the government. Uh, closely related to that, you were with us live on... Uh, live from your location yes. last year in November when we talked about the uh, the ESA commitment to comprehensive sexuality education which mm -hmm. is closely linked to the statistics, statistics that we have tonight um, what is the progress has the government committed to it uh, do we do we have progress oh god um unfortunately not mm -hmm. um kenya has not committed yet but there's still time they have until december to recommit so mm -hmm. we are hoping they will recommit by then we're just trying to have discussions with the different government uh, heads that can sign that the ministry of education the ministry of foreign affairs just have discussions and why the the the, the you need the um, as a commitment is important as well and also key in the aspect of the east african srhr bill srh bill which is also very important for young people and if if and if kenya recommits to esa mm -hmm. and the east african srh bill passes then it will mismatch what the reproductive health policy says so that means we'll have to go back and write that policy again because it will be it will there'll be a mismatch between what it says and what other treaties are saying and if the policy stays as it is the national adolescent sexual reproductive health policy that is under review will still have the same issues because even with the review of with the review of that particular policy the meetings were called last minute mm -hmm. the consultation the public participation that was supposed to take place in nairobi we were called to machakos and we were mixed with guys from embu um guys from kitui and it just didn't make sense even the young people that were there the few that i spoke to they were like as we were called mm -hmm. we were told there's a meeting we go and sign so you see they're not even providing that opportunity to know what the meeting is actually about so there's been a lot of that is actually another policy that we are looking into to just make sure that it actually reflects the lived realities of young people all right mention a bit about what you're doing and uh, as youth changes kenya uh what are you doing in terms of making sure that uh, the especially the young ladies can get that comprehensive sexuality education from your perspective from your abilities mm -hmm. in your level what exactly are you doing on the ground to make sure that um, all over the country we have ladies and we have people championing for the young ladies, mm -hmm. not just informing them, but also championing for their rights. What exactly are you doing on the ground as Youth Changes Kenya? And how exactly can one plug? Is it a closed thing or mm -hmm. can citizens actually plug in to help with the work that you're doing um so we work in Nairobi, kiambu and kakamega so most of our programs are in those areas so with kakamega we've trained champions we call them champions since we cannot be in kakamega all the time it's easier to work with people that are there so we train them on what sexual reproductive health and rights is and then they're the ones to cascade the information to the others in the society in the communities the same thing with Nairobi, the same thing with kiambu so that is what we're doing trainings and then also we also, we also offer information on social media um, and it's not closed, like you cannot take part. Go to our social media handles. If you see we have a petition, sign. If you want to be engaged and to work with us directly, send us a message. Um, go to our social media handles, Twitter, YC underscore Kenya. Send us a DM and we'll see how best we can work together. And we also sometimes 
not sometimes we have a, a, a pay bill um uh, pay bill number that mm -hmm. you can also contribute resources to because we've seen people showing interest especially when it comes to returning girls back to girls back to school mm -hmm. so if you have something and you do want to support then feel free to just go on twitter our dms and we'll provide more details all right yes so you, are, you, are you looking forward to like uh go beyond kenya yes. at some point we just want to work within kenya first because uh -huh. we're like three counties uh -huh. so we want to cascade to other counties and then we will see beyond uh, working, but working beyond Kenya. But oh. we do have partners from other county countries. We have partners in in Uganda. Mm -hmm. We have partners in in Kakamega in Tanzania, and we also have a few partners in in Malawi. So we are getting support from different aspects as well. All right. Allow me to go back a bit to the bill, uh, to the sexual reproductive health bill, and you mentioned earlier that there are gaps. Mm -hmm. Just before I let you go, it's good for us to understand what are these gaps that are in this particular bill that you would want included and how fast do you want them included now that we have a stalemate of sorts <laughs> uh, with the reproductive health policy unfortunately it's already launched it's it's out there mm -hmm. so the best we can do is go to court and prevent it from being implemented uh, but when it comes to the east african sexual reproductive health bill it's a very progressive bill it mm -hmm. does cover the different issues of young people however it still has gaps as well um, because there's issues around complex sexuality education, different governments having different definitions, mm -hmm. people bringing their values into the whole conversation. But it's a very progressive bill. We have very progressive members that are championing for the bill. So with the bill, we are currently having a petition online to just get people to sign, to just show the MPs, the members of parliament of the East African Legislative Assembly that this bill is important. Um, I was in the public participation forum. Um, we were able to present a memo that we, we conducted with the young people. So we do have a few recommendations. So the, one of the gaps we saw is people living the, people, people with the disabilities were not really captured in the document as well. They were not speaking about issues around endometriosis, PCOS that affect women when it comes to reproductive health. They've lumped, there's a mismatch in terms of the language. There are times they are calling people adolescents, other times it's young people, other times they're being lumped up as youth. Mm -hmm. So those are the few gaps that I can point out but we did present a memo to to the Yala assembly so we're just waiting for feedback and then we see how best can we plug in when the when the hearings for the bill start uh, probably towards the end of the year do we, if we'll go to Arusha and so and tell the MPs please pass the bill um or we'll find other other ways of just engaging with them mm -hmm. yes all right thank you so much Justin for joining us in our studio tonight and talking about reproductive health policy mm -hmm. and the gaps and the progress and the needs that the people have. Uh, personally, I think reproductive health touches on everyone who exists yes. on Earth today. And so we should be very uh, much aware of what's happening mm -hmm. in that particular sector. And my director says Eriak. I don't know what Eriak is. <laughs> uh, Eriak yeah. means I'm smart. <laughs> ah, amazing, amazing. So <laughs> what, 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 oh, it's Jura actually, Samson Jura, one of, oh, of okay. my colleagues here. Thank you. Um, uh, what, so what, thank you. Thank you is what? Now that area. Thank you is is, is Erokamano. Erokamano. Ah, I yes. think I know that. Erokamano. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Erokamano, <laughs> for joining us in this particular conversation and getting to enlighten us on this particular topic. There you have it, dear viewer, uh, on reproductive health policy and the gaps and what we need to be doing and what we need to be championing as being led by organizations such as Youth Changes Kenya. And we've been having Josephine Cheng, who's the program lead at YCK. She'll be back to join us once again. You can be sure about that to continue talking about this very important aspect of health that affects us all. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back in just but a bit. and go anywhere.